Nice to see you all again. This is a good Sunday. Hallelujah. This morning I woke up, the sun is shining, the bird is singing. And I was telling the Lord, what a wonderful, what a wonderful Sunday there is. Because the anointing of God is really among us. If you are keen in the spiritual senses, you can tell the Sunday morning, even the atmosphere, the air you breathe, is not the same. It's saturated with the powers of kingdom. Amen. And there are so many good news that happened in this week. Uh, I do want to update you guys a little bit because all these good news are not just good news. They are the, basically how the moving of the Holy Spirit of this kingdom millennium power. And if you don't understand it, if you don't recognize it, and you will not respect it, you will not pay the respect to it as you should. You will just think, oh, just another testimony, oh, just another miracle, oh, just another healings, and you do not know how to give glory to God and respect the testimony of the Holy Spirit. So today I'm going to talk about two things. Number one is how to recognize and discern this authority, which is kingdom authority, so you will not be going against it. And if you go against it, it will be really sad. And the second thing we're going to talk about how to truly receive this anointing so we can rise with it. There are so many good things that God is doing around the world. And I was saying to myself, Charles, if you do not know how to rely on this, then you'll be... I was going to use to say I'll be damned, but I'm not sure if I can say that in the, on the public. How you say it? I'll be damned if I missed it. Of course, I don't want to say the word, huh? I don't know. It may not be proper, but it really brings forth my feeling. You know, like, you're missing so much. Like, if, if something is really good happening, and you're just living, you don't know, and by the time you, you, you know, everybody was rising, and then you say, you left behind, you know, you, you know, that's the feeling, right? You don't want to be like that. So, you want to first recognize that authority. When you have, I want to start with this China church uh, union. You know, we have the church that we're part of it, basically, on, on the board. Uh, you know, it's a union of 8 million people. It's probably the biggest church in the world. And you can probably say, oh, big deal. Because a church is not based on number. You don't look at a 8 million people church and say, whoa, that's cool. And you look at a 80-person 80, 80 church and you say, oh, that's no good. Because church doesn't count on people. But it's not about the size of the church. It's about this 8 million people church is basically a combination of a few huge church. They are like a million people strong, each one, and they're willing to give up their own identity and join with the mainstream and becomes this, at first maybe like 6 million and then now it grows up to 8 million because God is blessing them. Imagine if you have a 1 million member church, you're the leader of that church. Are you willing to lay down your pride and to merge with another 5 or 6 big church and become just one church and you lose your identity, nobody ever know you anymore, all they know is a board that runs that church? This is something that the United States church won't be able to do, but it happened in China. Don't you see it is a work of God? It's basically a testimony of the Holy Spirit that He is uniting His church. As Paul is saying, what are we waiting for? Waiting until we are all united as one in the power of the words. Right? So now you look at the United States church, you have all these different church, and nobody cares about each other. So basically, the pastor is like kings of every single church. And nobody listens to everybody. It's like a different country. We have like a United Nation here. But over there is like one church. Right? Pretty soon the entire China will become like one church. And they are having this second reformation, uh, a forum that all these uh, scholar and, and, and pastor and, and, and theolo uh, theologians, they gather together. And every day, you know, they're going through tons of literature from different people, and they make comments. They're saying that how to set up, so to, to unify basically the truth, right? Because some people say, oh, 
tongue speaking is no good. Some people say tongue speaking is important. So is it important or not important? It's not up to he say, she say, but the forum will decide. And right now, the entire Church of China is saying that we should speak in tongue. You know, basically, they're unifying not just the church, but they're unifying the truth. And you see the authority here. If you don't see the authority here, you're blind. It's not about something big. It's about it's the movement of the Holy Spirit. And you have to pay the respect to it. Okay. Oh, we miss, we miss Nancy so much we're about to die. <laughs> you know, it's just like, because she's been gone for, for a month, right? So when we see a spiritual authority, we want to recognize it. And what you should do in your heart, you should give glory to God. Instead of saying, oh, but big deal, you know. You should, when you see something that is of the Holy Spirit, His work, you should, in your heart at least, say glory to God. And that's the right attitude. If you don't, then basically you're either ignorant or you are a fool in the kingdom, in the spiritual realm. Because when God moves, when God acts, you have to pay attention and you have to acknowledge it. Okay. For example, we have a lot of miracles in this church and people listen to us about miracles. Some people even despise us because we have miracles. Because they're thinking that, oh, this miracles thing is really not bad. It's not good because theory of cessation, you know, our church doesn't buy miracles. So when you have, if you don't talk about miracles, I can, you know, treat you nicer. But when you talk about miracles, then I have to discern, is that from God or that's not from God? And then I have this kind of distant, brother and sister, this is so darn simple. Because we have this wrong concept about Matthew when Jesus said the, the, the false Christ, you know, and, and the, the false teacher, the false teacher will come up, the false prophet will come up, and they can perform great miracles. If it's possible, even the, the chosen one will be deceived. So they were thinking, okay, so miracle could be performed by the devil and could be performed by God. So we have to be really careful here. Brother, this is the, if you have this kind of concept, that means you are totally ignorant about biblical rule and concept. That statement is talking about, yes, the devil also has power to do some supernatural things. But the devil and the dark side and the false prophet, whoever they are, they will never function under a church spirit. The church spirit, who is the Lord? Christ. And do you think the Antichrist or the, or the false prophet, they want to lord Jesus? No, they want to be the king themselves. They want to be their lord. So they will not perform their miracle under the spirit and the name of Christ. And they don't want to give glory to God. They want to draw glory to themselves. And they are not going to be in a church. Trust me. So it's not a very, very difficult thing to do to discern. If I heal anyone in the name of Jesus, you should 100% give glory to Jesus. Right? Don't try to discern this, because when you discern this, it's totally how ignorant it is. Because you know I'm not from the spirit of Christ, uh, of, of the devil, because I am healing in the name of Jesus. Right? So unless you're saying that that Jesus is not your Jesus, my spiritual, uh, my Jesus Christ is not your spiritual, and that, that becomes a big thing, okay? You could be blaspheming at that point. So when you see a Holy Spirit movement, it's not about me anymore. It's not about HGC. It's not about our miracles. It's about God divinely. He has moved and act in, among us. So even though you don't, dis, you, don't, you, you don't like us, you should at least respect what God has do, done. Okay? Now, this is a very, very critical thing because this is a kingdom moment where the power of God and authority of God is going to move and I don't want you guys to catch fire because I want you guys to really receive the blessing instead of receiving the judgment because this kingdom is coming in authority and authority is not something that functions in the spirit of love. Authority and power function in the spirit of judgment. So for, the, for those who love God and for those that walk in the way of spirit, we will clap our hands and say, oh, hallelujah, right? But for those that are 
you know, wishy-washy. They're not really like, they're like so-called Christian. They've been playing church for a long time. It is not a good time for them because this spirit is not about grace. This spirit is about judgment. God is separating the inner court and outer court and leave the outer court Christian to the world so they can be judged all together. But while those that he loves will be chosen, we will have our seal on our forehead and no tribulation can hurt us. And trust me, in this end time, the great things to come is the revival. There is no way that God will let the Antichrist or the tribulation to take that center focus point and the spotlight. No, this, this is not about them. It is about the glory of God returning to His church. Okay, so we can set this thing right. The authority is very, very important to understand. The work of the Holy Spirit is, is to be respected and is to be glorified. And don't just, you know, try to use your ignorance and say, okay, I may not, this may not be from God, so I'm not going to praise, praise God. That's very foolish. So, eventually, this, 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 this movement is going to get big, bigger and bigger. It's not about HGC, it's about movement. And uh, I, want, I don't want you guys to be ignorant about this movement. This movement is on. It's not going to happen. It's already happening. And so in June, uh, this, this gathering of naval, global naval, oh, <laughs> tribal nation, it, it's really a big, con huge conference, okay? And they invited us, we should the hand, and we're going to go there and we're going to do some healing. Uh, and it is all the, 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 there's a lot of young people over there and that they are in, in drugs, involved in drugs, in sex, and in alcohol and things. But we're going to go there and we're going to heal them, we're going to liberate them with the sheer powers of God. And then this lady over there was spending like half an hour talking to me, which is uh, the wife of the leadership of that whole, con whole conference. She was, was talking to me about God move her and show her vision that there are people getting in line to get healed instantly and there are people with crutches. They will be putting aside all the crutches because God is going to heal them. And she, she says that for all these years, I haven't seen that happen yet and maybe now the healing is coming. And I told her that I'm not sure it's going to be happen exactly like how you see the vision, but I can assure you there will be healing because everywhere we go, there will be healing. There will be signs and wonder and miracles. This is how God testifying the, the message that we have. So we also have this uh, jo Joanne that came from uh, Washington, D.C. She was end state cancer. So yesterday, she was saying, I have more than cancer because the cancer is spreading everywhere. And my, you know, it's really, really, she can't even walk. She's on the crutches. And then she pleaded me once, but I don't, want, I don't like to have people so, coming so far away and out of a hose her. But she pleaded me again, so again, again, and I, and I say, okay, come over. So she did came over, and now she's waiting in my mom's house, so later on we can meet her if you want to. It is a good sign because this lady came from Washington, D.C. That's really on the other side of the United States. Why did a person will beg you and beg you and come flying all over you know, over, and it's very hard for her to take that long, long, long plane because she, she can't even hardly walk. And then she had to come over here to get healing. You know why? Because the 100 people that we heal in, uh, in Washington, D.C., you know, the testimonies are so great. So people starting to hear our name. And that's what happened to the, global, uh, the, the tribal nation. Same thing. People start healing listening to our, the how we heal in China. And so we're taking notice. Not that we are taking notice, but because the Spirit of the Lord is using us to carry out a message. So yesterday when we prayed for her, I really wish somebody should do the recording. And nobody, of course, nobody is going to record because I, you know, I don't have this kind of assistant. So in the future, I think Vivian will be my assistant. So in, in the future, when you move to uh, ministry, how you should take the video. Because if I let you hear what God has spoken through Joanne yesterday, it will totally shock you. Because we're getting into this trifle, you know, you know, usually we just pray in tongues. But no, we get into there like three, four seconds. And the Lord saying that I am the Lord that speak, and today I will speak to you. You know, and he was like talking with the power. And it's really a phenomenal thing. You know, I wish you guys can listen to it. 
I think if you just listen to it, you feel that healing power. And after I healed, after we prayed for her, because her hand was cold, and I touched her hand, her hand was like was scorching fire, like hot. And I was telling mom, Christine Yi, no, please touch her hand and see how hot her hand is. And I was asking uh, Wing and Crystal to this be the testimony, to witness. They touched her hand. Her hand was really hot, you know why? And I said, the Lord said, this is the unsurpassing powers of life from a cancer patient. And she's going to get well, I have no doubt about it, because that power is so great. I mean, this is like one of the tip of the iceberg. There's so many miracles that are happening around that we, we forget to count. And so now I want to start having a little bit more testimony sharing because I think we should start giving glory to God because just because we, we get so used to it, we take it for granted, it's so common, we don't really try to give glory to God. So that is like how God is moving and God is rising us up and is really, really going to change everything. It's changing things in the political dimension, which I'm not going to talk about there, but it's also going to change our life. It's going to change our church. And also right now, it seems like we don't have much, but we're on the right track. It's almost like an NBA championship game. Somebody is going to get that iron scepter because the man child, I believe, is going to show up in 2017. And it's so good to have that power. Don't you want that power? Some people doesn't care about spiritual power. Uh, you know, because they don't understand what a spiritual power is. You know, a very good example of spiritual power is when you have spiritual power or when you're about to get the spiritual power, God is going to set you up on a ministry basis. If you're not in a ministry basis, you will get less power, right? Because there's no way that you have no ministry and all of a sudden you jump into power. Because that power is a ministry power. It's a ministry in the, the kingdom of God. So a ministry that is healthy and strong is ready to take on this super man child power. So like Wing, you know, without, you know, without anything, right now she got everything. She got a great job in the government, you know, which all, everything is what she doesn't deserve. Everything that she got physically is just a, a base, you know, a base for her ministry. Her true ministry is the hand. And God is anointing the hand more and more. And today I, uh, we are going to assign some of the prayer for the, uh, the other team, the rock. right? So I want you guys to catch on to it. And if you're not with us, it's very hard to catch on to it. And we really don't have that much time to fellowship. We don't have that much time to hang out. you know. But if we can hang out, it's going to change your life physically and spiritually. And you can see the hand is going to get more and more healthier. We're going to look younger and younger. We got stronger and stronger. You know, it's just like going reverse in time. And this thing is going to continue on and continue on because this is the anointing. And you want to catch on to that. And don't just live your life because everything is just another day. No, it's not another day. This is kingdom time. This is kingdom era. You want to catch on to the good things. The good thing is you know, imagine if you have this power of life and you can heal whoever you want to heal and you're telling me it's no big deal. Okay, in the human level, you can say that I don't like you. That's why it's no big deal. But in a spiritual level, it is all the testimony of the Holy Spirit. You have to respect it. And the power is within us. And I can feel it, literally feel it. And, and it's like after I heal somebody, I feel stronger and I feel younger. My mind is sharper. Okay, I can go on and on and all this stuff. So first thing, that let's get it done. Let's recognize and know how to discern this kingdom power and do not disrespect it. So I do want to bring this subject because, uh, because I know how a lot of young people, they have this new statement, especially a lot of liberal, liberal church. They say, okay, Paul said to whatever people, I'll become that type of people. So they, they say that in order to win the people in the church, 
uh, to church, I want to become like them. So you see guys, you know, putting on earrings, you know, like earrings like diamond. It's pretty cool, but I won't advise it. And then, uh, and, and you see guys putting on tattoos and trying to be showing cool and, and got the hip hairstyle and all this thing is so hip. And you ask them because I want to dress like this so I can draw some young people to Christ. Yeah, because they will feel more friendly that I'm like them, right? So I want to say this because this has a lot to do with kingdom power. Oh, we welcome the Boy Scout. Okay. It has a lot to do with kingdom power. I'm waiting for the door to close. Okay. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he never needed to dress like the people or make himself look like others to impress others. It's all about your charisma, your spirit, right? This is true spirituality. It's not something that you hide, but it's something that you shine. The authority of kingdom only reveal itself when it's active, when you're engaging with other people. If you are so good in martial art, for example, like the best in the world, but you hide yourself in some kind of hill and you live your life up there, your, your martial art hasn't influenced the world, your martial art means nothing to the world because you just hide yourself. That's why the Lord said, you know, your light is shining into the darkness shine in front of people. So there are people that never sin because they don't know anything. They don't know, even know how to sin, right? They're not engaging with the sinful people. They're always hiding out, praying in the corner. Of course he won't sin. There's no chance for him to sin, right? But if you put him into the world, he cannot influence the world. He will become like the world because he really doesn't have the spirituality. So uh, true spirituality and true kingdom power is an engaging power. So the, uh, the, in Deuteronomy, it says that it will be the, the leader and not be the, the follower, right? Everything you'll be staying on top, you won't be, you'll always be on top. It's a blessing for those who follow his word. And this true spirit of that is that in kingdom millennium spirit, we will be on top. What that means is we are going to influence people and the people are not going to influence us. And our light is going to engage with the darkness and our light will shine and break their darkness. And it doesn't mean that I have to put on earrings and stuff like that because that is very foolish. Because you do not need earthly things to draw people to heavenly stuff. You do not need earthly authority or earthly style to function in the kingdom. Kingdom is raw Sheer authority and power is your charisma, is your presence, is your, it, it's just Christ like the glory of God shining from you. So people want to listen to you, want to follow you. Doesn't mean that you have a tattoo or you have to, you know, put on the earrings. No, if you want to have earrings and tattoo, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge you. But just don't put that spiritual phrase on it like you're doing it for the kingdom or food doing it because of gospel, because there's no such thing in the gospel. Gospel, everything is functioning in sh sheer kingdom power. That's why Paul said there are three things that give testimony. It's the blood. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. It's the gospel power. The blood will heal. The blood will forgive. The blood will save. And then the water, right? And the water is the word of God. The water will cleanse. The water will lift you up. The water is really going to correct you and edify the thing. You know, the power of the word is really, really strong. And then, what's the last thing? The Holy Spirit. And what did the Holy Spirit do? It's not talking about your indwelling Holy Spirit. It's talking about the action and the testimony of the Holy Spirit, which is the miracle and healing that's surrounding what you preach. And evidently, a lot of church is lacking on that, not only lacking on that because they don't want to feel bad, they just despise it altogether and they put on this stupid, you know, John Calvinist title like theory of cessation. Because that is the testimony of the Holy Spirit. So in your life, if you're a healthy Christian, if you're a good Christian, if you're a normal Christian, let's not put it so high. If you're a normal Christian, 
you will have the power of the gospel in you. That means if you see somebody, you will influence that person. Like Corey, if one day you have a boyfriend, you know, once you meet, before he meet Corey, he's just a guy. But once he meet Corey, he's starting to get captured by these powers of kingdom. He will start changing, right? Or one day, if Kylie, if you have a girlfriend, you don't have a girlfriend yet. But if you have a girlfriend, once you have a girlfriend, that girlfriend is going to rule, being drawn by your kingdom power, influenced by your kingdom power. That is what we call millennium spirit. It's like you're on top. That's the power of gospel. And then you don't even have to speak the word. But if you speak the word, it's, it's even more powerful, right? The word of God. And then the Holy Spirit is going to come and testify for you. And you're going to have miracles. You're going to have anointing. You're going to have so much power in you that they're undeniable. This is the person of God. It's going to change everything. I want to catch you on that. And some of us is all already being blessed. We are blessing so abundantly. I don't want anybody to miss it. I want everybody to ride with it. And this is the spirit that we're going to ride. It's a millennium spirit. We're not here to wait for Antichrist or, in, or any kind of you know, tribulation. We are here to wait for the greatest revival to come. And the revival is, revival is already starting in China. Just the fact they can unite themselves is a miracle. It's a revival. It's a really, really big start. And just the fact that they're willing to gather together for the theological forum to discuss what is right, what is wrong, that is already phenomenal. You know, the second reformation of Christianity is amazing. Okay, now let's get into the second part, how we receive this anointing. So when we look at Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 14, you're talking about this, it's talking about the fallen of uh, Lucifer. You know, when Lucifer was being created, he was so beautiful, the Bible said, that his power, his strength, and his knowledge is complete. Isn't that awesome? It's like, it, it, it's like God. When I create you, Chris, right, right. God said, Chris, when I created Chris, knowledge and power is complete in him. Well, what kind of compliment is that? You know, it's complete. Everything that God created is, is you know, power and, and knowledge. So Lucifer is on somebody on the very high places. But this is where he fall now. It's a verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of dawn. You have been cast down to the earth. You know who else is called morning star? Jesus Christ. Mm. So you who once lay low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Number one. Number two. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Wow. Number three. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly on the utmost height of Mount Zephyr. It's like among all the Assembly of God, I am like mm, high up there. Isn't that pretty cool? Huh? We decide that too. Number four, I will ascend above the tops of the crowd. So the point is, the devil, before he becomes devil, for five times, right, he said, I will, I want, I want, I want. So this I will spirit, this I, 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 I want this, I want that, is basically the cause of fallen. So five is a number of grace. So the devil have used the maximum number of grace because God put all his creation in a position of grace, but the devil uses the maximum you know, grace to want something, to desire something. And on the contrary, we see what happened to Christ in, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8. Number one, talk about Christ. Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Right? Number two, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Number three, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. Number four, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So basically, you see how the devil, he falls because he said, I want, I want, I want. And Christ, 
he was lifted up. If you continue to read Philippians, so therefore God lifted him up to be above everything. So Christ comes down, I give up, I give up, I give up, right? And if you, the more you want to gain, the less you're going to have, the more you want to give up in the spirit, the more you can gain this power. So humility is very, very important in this, in this game. So I like to use this Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 to sum it up. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So the Lord said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So what happened in the old days is they have this really um, experienced ox or cow, right? And then they would use an, an, a yoke to bind, bind it to, to another very inexperienced uh, calf or ox or cow. So whatever the experienced cow is doing, the inexperienced one, we have to do it, right? Wherever he goes, he was good because this experienced one is leading it. So until the inexperienced cow becomes like an experienced cow, right? So this is what Jesus was using. It's very, very beautiful. Yeah, I want you to understand this. A lot of time we talk about the yoke, the anointing will break all the yoke. When we ever hear that yoke, it has a connotation of like a cross, right? It's not good. Who want to be yoked? It, right? Everybody want a yoke to be broken, to want to be free, like free as a bird, right? No yoke on a bird, right? But yoke, is almost like a bondage. It's like something that controls you, something that, that ties you down, right? You get that idea? So we always want to break the yokes. We always say the anointing will break the yokes. It's like we are, we are, we are a whole bunch of yoke breaker, and we are just you know, hoping to be, to be yoke free. But right here, you have to understand this. Christ said, bear my yoke. It's like my yoke will be like on you, so you can learn from me, okay? So some of you are still under that yoke. Some of you. It's like you want to go left, but you cannot go left because there's no door for you. You're forced to do right. You want to do certain things, you can't. Right? Some, of, some, of, some of your yoke is your financial. Some of your yoke is your, your career. Some of your yoke is maybe your physical health. It's like you want to do certain things, but no. Something is, is ruling you. Right? And so you're being forced to do certain things which you don't really like to go, but you have to. So we all, like some are being a yoke, actually I'm totally yoke free. Priscilla is yoke free. I know some of you are yoke free. It's like we are so free, we can do everything that we want to do, and the Lord will enable it. You know, this is the dimension I want you to come to it. In everything, it's almost like unbelievable. And I was saying, the Lord, are you sure you're not spoiling me? Because I do feel a little spoiled. And I always feel I'm being spoiled. And then later on, I think, yeah, God will not make that mistake. I must be good. So, but the point is, you know, God will put you in the yokes so you can learn like Him. I mean, and how are you going to learn like Him? That you learn how to submit yourself. So the word uh, uh, humble, right? Humility, humble, is called kana. Kana is like making yourself lowly, putting yourself down, making yourself to submit. There is a lot of things that happen in your life now. The first lesson you should do is to submit because it's the hands of God. Don't try to fight that. Don't complain. Complain is a really bad thing because that's exactly what happened to the Israelites. They were 40 years in the wilderness, but God said, I would not like them. I don't like them. So they, none of them, they always strike that. So they cannot enter into the kind of candidate because they murmur. No, so murmur is basically, is like a rebellion saying, but I want that. I don't want this. I want that. So for, for young kids, you know, there's only one kid right here listening behind there, uh, behind. Okay. To be a good boy, there's only one word. If you want to make it simple to you. One word. Submission. Because submission is the character of Christ. And submission is what brings Christ so powerful. Because submission is the path to glory. And the, and the path of the Lucifer is, I want this, I want that. Why did this? I don't want like this. I want this, I want that. That is being a Lucifer. Right? 
And that path can only lead to one thing, if it's going down. Okay? So in this millennium, we want to catch that bridegroom spirit, the bride spirit, so it becomes the bride church. We want to stay on top, you know. We want to lead. We want to catch that anointing. We want to catch that scepter if the man child is about to rise. We want all this good stuff. But be careful that want, want, want is not that kind of want. It's the want through a humble heart, it is a submissive heart. That God puts you in a certain way and you want to shine in that certain way. Shine the glory of God. Whatever it is, even in tribulation, even in pain and suffering, you will be able to shine. You know, like Priscilla is a good example. For all these years, she has a lot of pain. She has a lot of suffering. But she never, you know, seriously murmur and say, God, forget it, you know. Under that yoke now, she's basically yoke-free. Now, all well, this thing is not a yoke anymore. She still has this pain that she's going through. She still has her trouble going through. But her glory already outshines everything. And something big is happening. Okay? So I want to leave the last five minutes or six minutes for some testimony. Hmm? Priscilla first. Okay, wing first. Dear brothers and sisters, so um, back in March when we were in uh, Washington D.C. doing the at the conference that we were at, um, there was this one brother who came up to us and asked that his nearsighted be healed. So we were caught off guard and we were really debating upon this because this does not fall into the principle of the sickness that we pray for. One, it's not life-threatening. Two, his livelihood isn't dependent on it. And three, there's plenty of um, uh, medical procedures and whatnot that can take care of this problem. Why are you coming to us? So after, after much debate within the team, um, it was decided that I prayed for this brother by myself, um, not by the team. So um, I prayed for him. I prayed earnestly for this case because Nonetheless, it is still a uh, petition that we bring forth um, in front of God at the throne um, because this is the calling that of our team, the hand. So after that, I came back and within my, with it, when I pray for all the cases that we try flow upon, he's still within my heart and I still renew the prayer that I have uh, upon him. But then when I came back this month um, at work, I've started to realize that I've been looking at numbers funny and the words funny as if I'm seeing doubles. I can't tell five and six. I keep inputting incorrect information when it's right next to me. <laughs> and then so I thought, hey, do I need to check out my eyes and, or do I need computer glasses? So I made an appointment and last Saturday I went to get my eyes checked. Um, I went in and I told her, the, the doctor, my prescription and then um, she had me re-examined to see if it's the right prescription. Um, throughout the entire time, she looked very puzzled, and she actually did the exam twice. At the end of it, I asked her, is, are my eyes that bad now? And she's like, I, uh, actually, no. You're wearing the wrong prescription. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, your, your prescription now is way more than what you actually need. My prescription now for my left eye is 650, right eye is 600, and right now the new prescription is 500 for both eyes. And then so I was telling her, wow, I'm very, I don't know what to say <laughs> because um, one, this, has, this was not an example that we've ever come across, God healing or, or renewing the, uh, the, the renewing of the eyes. And so, um, we were, I was asking Pastor Shellas, and then it, we came to it that when I was praying for the brother in Washington, D.C., um, I don't know how, I don't know the hand of God upon him and the request that he put in because it is so out of the ordinary to ask for something like this from God. But in all earnesty, I did bring it to God in, in the pureness that I did. And in return, in the zoning and the 
anointing of healing within that prayer session. In return, my eyes got healed, got healed in, in what little that it is now. However, I do believe that it will continue because in all of the prayers that we've done, even though afterwards we're all exhausted physically, after being in that anointing, being that close to God, being in that unction and the zoning, we all get something out of it. Our body comes out healthier afterwards. And, and um, it's a renewal of not just the spirit, but of the body. And I know all of us, when we're in this environment, we truly hope that all of the BS, all of the other prayer teams will catch on to this also. Detailed. So detailed. <laughs> I don't mind. It's hard not to be detailed sometimes. Hold on. It's going to be a little bit longer because it's actually in threes. God always gives me things in threes, like a banana split. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So speaking of being in the unction, in the presence, I was totally in the unction of the Holy Spirit while I was in Tahiti because <laughs> I knew I was going to miss Sunday bad press. So I was like, God, I want to be in your presence. Okay, so anyways, um, the first one is I was experiencing some really blurry vision, eye vision um, for three days before, before taking off. And then I was on the plane and I was um, saying, God, I need to see paradise. <laughs> I need to see how beautiful your creation is. So I cannot have blurry eyes. <laughs> so I took that eight hours of um, praying and I did like a special tri-flow prayer uh, with myself <laughs> and God, I guess. Um, and it was like breathing in, breathing out, but the breathing in was more like embracing the cross. It was, it's, I can go more into it uh, next time, but it was a special tri-flow pr prayer and then I was like, when I open my eyes, I want to see clearness. And I opened my eyes and it was not clearness. <laughs> and I was like, dang it. <laughs> and then so, no, but um, I kept praying and I kept like just dwelling in the presence of God and really trusting in Him and really like um, try flowing. And then the next day I opened my eyes when I woke up from my sleep and it was clear vision. I'm like, I can see paradise. <laughs> you know, it's very important because everyone was saying how turquoise and blue the water was and I could see nothing. I was like, yay, it's pretty. I know it's pretty. <laughs> so um, no, but that was really cool um, and being spoiled by God, right? Like, you know, I'm on vacation, I'm still complaining. <laughs> but um, then, the sec then I started paying attention, you know, because God, you know, shows me signs in threes, right? So then the next few days I went snorkeling and I cut my toe on a coral right and I didn't even know I cut my toe on a coral like for half an hour I was still <laughs> swimming in the ocean and nothing there was no blood right and then um, <laughs> yeah and we were supposed to go shark shark viewing and swimming and then so I got out of the water and I was walking through the woods back to you know you know it's a remote place and then she like turned around he was and I was slipping too I kept slipping as I was walking I was like why am I like walking so bad and then he turned around I was like your foot's bleeding and then he thought I lost my toe that was that was that much blood it was just squir squirting out and I'm like oh my god <laughs> right and uh, so it was just and I I honestly did not feel that much pain for the amount of blood that was coming out, but I was freaking out because I thought I lost my toe too. <laughs> Why was there so much blood? And then I turned around and the tour guy was behind me. He was like sighing because I was walking so slowly. <laughs> and then I turned around, I was like, I'm bleeding. And then he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he really freaked out. Anyway, so long story short, I went back to the hotel um, and it kept bleeding on and off and on and off for like a good six, seven hours, like constant blood. Because every time I stood on my foot, it just burst again and it was not that it's my big my big toe's not that big it's only like this much right <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is that much and then but just blood kept soaring out and i was taking a shower it stopped for a minute and then um i thought it stopped and i was getting dressed and when i turned around i left this whole tray of, of blood from the bathroom to where i was changing and it was like a murder scene in my in my hotel room and i was like oh my goodness what's going on so um she was like if your blood doesn't you know, like if, if you don't stop bleeding i'll have to take you to the emergency and that was like Everything closed by then was a pretty remote place, and their emergency room was basically a medical clinic, like the nurses room at my workplace. So I was like, no, you know, they probably won't even have the material to stitch me back up. <laughs> you know, I'm on my own, you know, that I barely had bandages, but every time I got up to go to the bathroom, it would just burst again. I was like, what is going on? Stop, right? And then so, so I, I, I was resting, and then I was like commanding my toe, you need to stop bleeding right now. You know, in the name of Jesus, stop bleeding, you know? And then it stopped. I was like, oh, 
cool, <laughs> you know? So then I went to the bathroom to test it out, right? And then I was like, kind of like hobbling. I'm like stepping on it. Oh, no blood. Hey, good job, you know? Like it listened to me, you know? I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm getting the hang of this, <laughs> all right? And then so, um, then the next part is kind of personal and gross, so only the sisters will understand. The, the brothers, please bear with me. Then the second part is my menstrual period came, right? And now I'm like, this is a lot of blood for one day. And she was like, are you feeling any like lightheadedness? Because like a lot of blood's coming out here right now. I'm like, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. Um, and then um, uh, through inspiration of uh, Twing and Crystal a few times, they kind of told me how they were able to control the flow of being like more or less or shorter or longer or skipping or whatever. A lot of complicated stuff that they were doing. So now I'm like, I'm going to do the same too. So um, I get seven full days. Okay, no, no shortcuts. I get full seven days. I was like, this is going to end in less than three days. I'm like, wow, that's ambitious of me. But this is going to end in three days, right? And then the so next two days, like ridiculous. Like I felt like I was going to faint because there was so much heavy, you know, <laughs> abundantness, right? To the point where I couldn't do anything for two days, like abundant, right? I'm like, wow, this is intense, right? And then um, for the whole day, you know, I, I didn't do much. And she was like, you know, this vacation sucks. <laughs> you know, you're not doing anything. I'm like, oh, okay, fine, fine, fine. So the, towards the end of the second day, it was only two and a half days. So naturally, natural body, it shouldn't happen this way. But two and a half days, I was like, this is way too much, like, you know. <laughs> and then so I, I commanded my uterus, you need to stop right now. <laughs> this is way too much. I get the point. You're good. You listen to my spirit. You listen to my authority. And then, like with full authority, like I commanded my uterus, you need to stop right now. One more drop. That's it. Done. <laughs> I was getting really mad. And then so in um, the next 10 minutes, literally from, I'm telling you, from the level of 10 flow to zero, and then for the next like 14 hours, nothing. I was like, oh, and it was only two and a half days, hours to only two and a half days out of seven. Um, not that healthy, I don't recommend it. I don't know why I did it, but <laughs> I did that. And then so I was, I was like praising God. I was really happy. I felt really spoiled and loved by God and everything all in his presence. And I thought it was a very funny sign. Um, but I started to pay attention because things come in banana split. So the next thing should be the message of God, right? Next morning, I, I went to the bathroom and the word of God just poured down, like my hair was standing up. You know when the word of God just pours in, so, so, like in a flash, it just came down. And then he said, remember, because I was still kind of laughing, like I can't believe I did that. The uterus totally listened to me. <laughs> like what kind of power is that? <laughs> you know? and, then, and then the word of God was saying, like remember those three signs? Yes. Remember what's happening in Washington, D.C.? Yes. Remember what's happening BS and the hand? Yes. He's like, that is the only the glimpse and the preview of what's about to come. Um, and HCC needs to be respected. And then I got really, really scared, right? And it's, like, and it's not that HCC needs to be respected because you, uh, HCC is arrogant or we're possessive or we demand it, but because God demands it, because the authority is coming down as authority of the bride of Christ. It's not just because one person is doing some miracles here and there and playing around here and there just to experience the funness of it, but it's like one person receives it, the entire body receives it, and it's entire authority that HCC is functioning in as the body and bride of Christ. And then I got really, really scared. And like I started, my spirit was trembling. I was washing my hands in the bathroom, but my spirit was trembling because I saw a glimpse of those who did not respect HCC. And it's not like just HCC, but like the body of Christ and what the Holy Spirit is doing and what was going to happen to them. And that's why sometimes I petition our appeal a little bit more earnestly to some of our friends and past brothers and sisters because I know what's happening in this church and, and the testimony that the Holy Spirit is giving. And then I didn't dare to laugh again, but I thought, what a funny sign, <laughs> these three signs. But then the, the seriousness of it, right, like as I was in, even in Tahiti, I, like, I could feel that unction even happening here and in Washington and just, you know, um, how we're functioning in the authority of Christ. So when Pastor Chella was starting to preach this series, I was like totally resonating and amening to it, the authority. <laughs>